Hi everyone, my name is Alex, I'm an engineer and my passion is with design, development and prototype production of all sorts of engineering solutions. And since I just finished uh, this job in the background here, which was hand scraping of carbon steel, I thought I might say a few words about the techniques I use for, well, hand scraping of carbon steel, particularly uh, the insert geometry. So let's take a look. First of all, let me tell you that the scraping I do, I learned in an autodidact manner. So I am sure there are more experienced scrapers around than I am. Nevertheless, over the years I couldn't get a hold of any information on hand scraping of carbon steel, so I decided to create this particular video. Also if you're wondering, I haven't attended the Richard King scraping class yet, even though I'm sure that it's a highly valuable experience. Nonetheless, I've talked to Stefan Gotteswinter about the contents of Richard King's class and as far as I understand he does not teach hand scraping of carbon steel, but he briefly shows power scraping of carbon steel. The ability to scrape carbon steel is quite important to me, because in the field of prototype production, getting iron castings nowadays is troublesome. It is way easier to design a prototype with machined or smartly welded features from readily available material, such as steel, aluminum, what have you. Scraping of carbon steel is strongly different from the classic scraping of cast iron. The problem with carbon steel is that with a typical scraping blade geometry, no good surface finish can be achieved. Simply put, from a scraping point of view steel is very stubborn. The cause for this is the different mechanical behavior of carbon steel in comparison to cast iron. Carbon steel hardens as we deform it. We call this behavior work hardening. In contrast to that, cast iron does not work harden, or only to a minimal extent. High strength aluminum grades also only work harden quite little. That is why these can be hand scraped pretty well. Work hardening is the material property that gives us a hard time with scraping. Let me try to show you why on the following sketch. Let the, dark, let the dark part be the workpiece, viewed from the side, and let the red part be the typical cast iron scraper blade with negative geometry. And let these be the chips, sorry, and let these be the chips. Now with the term negative we follow the definition shown here that uses the angle between the cutting surface and a line perpendicular to the work surface, this one here. So this is negative and this is positive. Now let us consider the cutting force. One can safely assume here that it is perpendicular to the cutting surface. Hereby we neglect friction on the cutting surface, but this is fair here. Consequently the cutting force acts upon the cutting surface like so, perpendicular. Its reaction force is equal but opposite and acts upon the chips we create, like so. What we learn from this is that with a negative geometry the cutting force tends to push the scraper blade away from the work and tends to push the chips onto the work surface. The result of this is that we can very precisely control the scraper and the chip thickness by applying downward pressure to the scraper. Well, that's the smart thing about scraping. But since the chips are pushed onto the workpiece, this can lead to a problem. The chips or any built up edge are deformed and in case of carbon steel they are work hardened and therefore are harder than the work surface. This tends to mar or scratch the surface and mess up our finish. So let's change our scraper blade to a positive geometry. Then the cutting force acts upon the cutting surface like so. Again perpendicular. 
And the reaction force again is equal but opposite, like so. What we learn from this is that the laws here are quite opposite to before. With a positive geometry, the cutting force tends to push the scraper blade onto the work surface and tends to lift the chips away from the surface. That obviously solves the problem of a scratched surface finish, but it gives us yet another problem. The scraper, pl uh, scraper blade is pushed onto the work surface, which, which messes up the controllability of the scraper and chip thickness. This might be tolerable and overcome by using a power scraper that is quite rigid, but it is intolerable for hand scraping. There is, however, a solution to that. Since I don't like to use a power scraper, I experimented with various scraping techniques and carbide insert geometries to find something that works on carbon steel. The solution is simple. In order to control the chip thickness, we must limit the angle with which the scraper blade digs into the work surface. That can be achieved with an additional surface on the carbide insert, like so. With this surface here. This way we gain the upper hand in controlling the chip thickness by lifting or lowering the scraper handle. This is different from classical scraping where we control chip thickness with downward pressure. One must get used to the other way of control here, but it works quite nicely. Now let me show you briefly how I grind such an insert. My friend Siggy gave me some drilled carbide blanks, which I hold in the single lip cutter grinder with some slotted round stock. This one, by the way, is a consumed carbide insert that I regrind. If you have undrilled blanks, you might use a C clamp instead of a clamping bolt. Setting the roll angle to zero. And setting the yaw angle to 15 degrees. Locking the dividing head and adjusting the angle of rotation to the dividing plate. I eyeball the light gap between the carbide blank and the face of the cup wheel to be parallel. With such a fine grit wheel, a few spring cuts are necessary when you finish the surface. By the way, for this purpose as well as for resharpening, I use a resin bound diamond cup wheel with 39 grit as per European designation. This should be equivalent to about 500 to 600 grit per US designation. Next I set up the grinder for the table. This thing is a makeshift block for regrinding saw blades, but I also use it as a table for grinding on the diamond cup wheel. Sorry guys, I haven't scraped it to fit yet. Here I set the table to 25 degrees for grinding the cutting surface. This gives an insert with approximately 10 degrees positive geometry. And here I freehand grind the shallow radius cutting surface. Resharpening of this insert is done like so as well. By the way, scraping on carbon steel requires more frequent resharpening of the insert than scraping on most cast irons. This is due to the hard iron carbide in the carbon steels 
a constituent which is uncommon in the cast irons. Well, that's the insert dedicated to carbon steel. Now let's give it a try. This is how it's used. Alright, let's have some test cuts on some sample material. In this case it's Mild Seal S235. Let's start with the standard cast iron scraping insert. First the roughing cut. And you immediately, immediately see the problem. We have all these tiny marks and marrings from built up edge on the negative cutting geometry. Well then you might say let's reduce cutting pressure and this will solve the problem. Let's try that next. So that's finishing cut, reduced cutting pressure. Let me dig through the rough surface first. Okay, so finishing pressure. Again, you see these marrings in scraping direction. So, reducing pressure doesn't solve this problem. Then you might say, okay, so let's try a positive cutting angle on the insert. So, swap the insert, and here we have 25 degrees between the cutting surface and the back of the insert. And as I hold the scraper for, for hand scraping about 15 degrees relative to the workpiece, that gives a an angle between the cutting surface here and the workpiece of about 10 degrees. Cut is very difficult to control, handling of the scraper is very awkward, it always tends to dig into the material which you can see from, from, these, from these marks like this one over here. And what you also can see is we have a very pronounced tendency of this insert to chatter on the material. And no matter how slight the pressure is which I apply, this is very slight pressure, let me dig through the rough surface first. You see this chattering tendency here as well, so uh, reducing pressure with a positive insert also doesn't solve the problem. And now finally let's test a positive insert. So swap the insert again, here we have a 25 degree positive angle re relative to this edge here again. But we also have a surface, this one here, which limits the angle with which the insert is digging into the material.
we have some slightly built up mar built up edge marrings here but with a the finishing these can be easily avoided Here are the three inserts and their results. The one on the right is the only one that gives satisfying results on carbon steel. Well guys, thank you very much for your interest in this video. I appreciate your time.